Hey guys, in this tutorial, we're going to learn how to create a long shadow effect in Photoshop. And the best part, everything is still fully editable. Rightio, so we're now in Photoshop. First of all, I'm going up to File, down to New, and I'm going to make a new document with a width and height of 1920 by 1080. Next, select the Type tool, and then click anywhere on the canvas and type some text. You can now select a font and customize the text from the top of the screen. And for this tutorial, I'm going to be using the font Korolev Condensed Bold. One other thing to remember is to make sure that your font is centrally aligned. Go back to the main selection tool and pop this in the center. Press Command or Control T to enable free transform. Scale your text up or down holding Shift and then use the arrow keys to nudge it into position. Next, right click your text layer and select Convert to Smart Object. Once you've done that, press Command or Control J to duplicate the selected layer. Then rename the top one as Text and the bottom one as Shadow. Next, we're going to hide the text layer and go up to Window and down to Actions. This will bring up the Actions panel and you can see I have an action created here. And what this enables us to do is record a series of actions inside Photoshop, save them, and then play them back at any time. So if it's your first time here, go down to the folder icon and create a new set. I'm going to call this Long Shadow 2, and then click the plus icon alongside to create a new action. Give your action a name, and then select Record. And whilst recording, everything you do in Photoshop will be listed under this action. So now I'm going to duplicate the shadow layer and press the down arrow key and the right arrow key to move it down and to the right one pixel. And I'm going to repeat this process a total of 10 times. Once you're done, you can press the stop icon to stop recording. And now the action is saved, I can select all of the shadows except one and hit delete or backspace. Now it's time to test if that actually worked. So select the action and then hit play. Oh, phew, it actually worked. Can you imagine if I said just hit play and nothing happened? You'd be like, geez, who is this clown? And the other great thing about this working and me not looking like a total plonker is that I can now press the play button over and over again and it's going to repeat all of those actions and I can use this to determine the length of my long shadow. And in this example, I'm going all the way off the canvas. Once that's done, you can close the actions panel down and remember you've got that action forever now. Now I can scroll this very long list of layers, hold shift to select all of them, and right click and select rasterize layers. And for my convenience, I can right click and merge these layers together. There we go, nice and simple. However, the problem now is that if I were to change the text, that shadow is rasterized and that will not change with the text. So let's undo a few steps until we have all of our smart objects back and then group these together. Give the group a name, long shadow. Just check all the layers are still in there. Yep, good. Next, turn the text layer back on, right click and select blending options. I'm then going to select color overlay and from the color picker, I'm going to sample the blue color of the long shadow, make this a little bit lighter and then adjust the hue ever so slightly. So it's all looking pretty good. Next, I'm going to double click on the thumbnail for the text layer I can now go inside the smart object and increase the canvas size. Make this nice and big and because we centered the text at the very beginning, I can now use the type tool to select this. I can change the font size, the text, the color, then go to file, down to save, switch back to your main document, and you can see that the text and the long shadow have both been updated. And the reason this works is because we duplicated that text smart object at the very beginning. And any duplications of a smart object, if you update one, they all get updated as well. Remember all of those shadow layers? They're all duplicates of that original smart object. Pretty cool, right? Next, it's time to select the background and then select the gradient tool from the toolbar on the left. It's usually hiding under the paint bucket tool. Click on the gradient slider at the top and then from the gradient editor, you can pick one of the many presets or double click on the swatches below to select your own colors. Click and drag to define the start and end point of your gradient and you can go back the other way as well. Also for this example, I'm going to right click on the long shadow group Go to Blending Options and check Gradient Overlay. And then from the Gradient Editor, same as before, I can select one of the presets or I can customize the gradient using the gradient slider and the swatches below. Click OK when you're happy and then OK again. If like me, you can't see what you're working on, you can hold spacebar and drag to move it out of the way. I'm now going to adjust the angle 
and you can see the angle of the gradient changes in real time. So there we go, everything's looking pretty good. And remember, you can double click that text smart object, go in, change the text, everything is still fully editable, save and close, grab yourself a well-earned cup of tea whilst Photoshop does its thing. And there you go, you've created a delicious long shadow effect that is not only easier to create in future, but is also still fully editable. So hopefully you enjoyed this one. If you did, you can ding the dong, smash the thing, take care, and I'll see you next time.